I just picked up my brand new 2022 Kawasaki KX112. I would take it for a ride, but unfortunately there's just a little too much snow. So I guess I'll do a little walk around video and tell you what I'm gonna do with it in the future and why I bought it. I was originally gonna buy a KLX 230 trail bike. And then I saw the KX100s at the time, it was before this KX112 was announced, and I saw how light and powerful they were, how much suspension travel they had, and I just couldn't resist it, to be honest. The KLX 230S that I was looking at weighed in at 254 pounds. This bike weighs 170 pounds. That's a huge difference, you know? Like, you're really gonna feel that on the trails. The, uh, the 230, it's got a 900 millimeter seat height. This one's got an 870 millimeter seat height. As a five foot one, five foot two guy, it's still almost too tall. So I'm about five foot one, five foot two, maybe with my boots on. And as you can see, it's, it's okay. I can kind of touch both feet with my uh, work boots on. With my riding boots on, I can only touch one foot. So I'm gonna see how the suspension settles out once I ride it a bit. And if it doesn't drop down a bit, I'm probably gonna put some lowering links on it to see what I can do with that. Another quick little cool piece of info about the weight is this bike only weighs two pounds more than the KLX 110, that little teeny tiny kid's bike, which is crazy to think about. We have a 1984, I think, Honda XR80 on the channel, and it only weighs eight pounds more than that. It's crazy to think that a bike with 19-inch front tire, 16-inch rear tire is that light. I can't wait to try it out. The ground clearance of this bike compared to the trail bikes is quite substantial. This bike comes in at 13 inches of ground clearance while the 230 I was looking at only had 10.8 of ground inches of ground clearance. Another thing that seems kind of unbelievable about this bike is the price. In Canada, the MSRP is $5,800. The YZ85LW, I guess that's large wheel, is a thousand dollars more than this almost. Which, like, could you imagine paying a thousand dollars more for an 85? I mean, I guess it's a Yamaha and all, but I don't know, that's hard to justify. I have heard some people say some of the Yamaha two strokes will come with like a top end kit, so that might be where that extra money's coming from, but. Like if you compare these to a KTM 85, this is like $2,000 less here in Canada. It's, it's really hard to justify buying anything else other than some shitty Chinese bike, but everyone knows how that's going to go. That's not going to turn out well at all. Up here, I was looking at buying a used KX100. I wanted one that's 2013 or newer because they have significantly more power, and you could not find one. For under five thousand dollars i picked this up you know all said and done taxes and everything it was about seven thousand dollars so two thousand dollars more for something that hasn't been ridden by some 12 year old kid that doesn't know how to ride you know you always you always see the ads oh low hours oh it's only got 10 hours oh fresh rebuild they always say fresh rebuild they never are you really got to watch out when you're buying these two strokes used we've bought lots of them you almost always end up doing an engine within the first year they're always trying to hide something when they're selling them it seems so if you find one of these things like a an older one a kx100 for a super good price make sure it's not too good to be true because up here it sure seems to be the case if you're buying one of these things brand new one thing you might want to check is the spoke tension i know i checked mine when i got it home and a lot of them were not tight. They were fairly loose. They obviously didn't come from the factory tight. And when they got the bike in and PDI'd it, they obviously didn't tighten them up. So some dealerships probably would, I'm sure, but something you might want to check into. The dealership I bought this from actually was closing its doors in a week. So maybe they were just in that, I don't really give a shit sort of mood, but 
just something to watch out for. This bike's got about 11 inches of suspension travel, front and rear. I think it's 10.8 to be exact. The uh, KLX 230 I was looking at only had 8.8 .8 inches of suspension travel. You know, two extra inches is quite a bit. I know this bike is made for kids and all, and I've been, you know, riding stuff like this most of my life. But the clutch pull on this thing is so easy. Like, it's it's pinky easy, which is really nice. I'm not going to complain about that. You know, I, I actually freed this clutch up a bit today on the Banshee, but it is, you know, it is significantly harder to pull. So, if you're a... A young guy worried about clutch pull this is this is nothing you can easily one finger this all day long I know I've heard of guys talking about keeping one finger on the clutch and on something like this you know it you can't you can't pull it with one at least I can't maybe a big tough guy can but that's a little plus of this thing I guess uh, in the future I do plan on doing a recluse auto clutch I've always wanted to try one out and I see they make them for this bike so when the uh, funds come available, I'm definitely going to put one of those on and try it out. Some other mods I have. I think I'm going to try a uh, Bill's pipe. I've heard good things about them. Uh, I could get another FMF or whatever like this thing, but I think I'm going to try something different. Go for a different look and see what kind of power that gives me. I'll probably change the reeds out. Probably put some V-Force 3 or V-Force 4 or whatever kind of V-forces I can get. Uh, I'll see how this key in carb treats me. If it's a real pain in the ass, I might switch it out to something like Electron. We'll see in the future. Uh, I'll probably do the flip out unbreakable levers, but I'll probably wait till these ones break, to be honest. I'm gonna try to run it stock this first year because I've spent a lot of money on this thing and there's more parts coming, so. Yeah, I don't I don't have the money to to mod this thing this year unfortunately. When I got this thing, there was still less than a thousand made. This is engine number 979 and the frame number 891. So, it's a pretty early model. It's kind of cool to have a three digit uh, VIN number, you know. I've never had that before. The suspension is fairly adjustable for being, you know, a kid's bike on the back. You got preload and you got low speed compression and you got the rebound adjustability. On the front, you just have a uh, compression adjustable on the bottom there and you can change gas pressure in the uh, tubes themselves, I believe, to kind of act like a higher or lower spring rate but it's not super, super adjustable like the bigger bikes, but more adjustable than some of this older stuff like this that I'm used to. I know they did a, a transmission change this year. I'm not really sure what that entailed, but this thing definitely uh, shifts really crispy. You know, it's, it's really easy to shift. You can get it into neutral pretty easy. I know a lot of these older beat up machines, they're not so nice. I know this thing, I you can hit neutral in between first and second, second and third, third and fourth. That doesn't seem to matter. You're always hitting neutral. So I'm hoping that's not the case with this. I'm hoping every shift is solid and it engages perfectly, but I guess I'll let you guys know in the future. One thing I found kind of funny, it's only got one radiator, but it's got two of these uh, air louver type things that that kind of direct the air towards the radiator like it's got one here for this radiator but then on the other side it's got one and it's not really blowing at anything it's i don't know why the hell they would do that it kind of at first i thought there was two radiators until i really stuck my head in there and no it's just it's just for show kind of weird to be honest yeah that's a quick little walk around of my new kx 112 it's my first dirt bike I've ever owned. I've probably got two, three hours in total seat time on a dirt bike, so it's gonna be a bit of a learning experience for me. Uh, I can't wait to try it out. It should only be another month or two before the snow melts. I had this thing out in the snow yesterday, and it's, it's pretty hard. There's quite a bit of snow out there, but still not enough for the snowmobiles, so we'll see if that changes, but 
worst comes to worst, we'll be riding this in a couple of months. So, shit, yeah.